It's also uh, important because we speak of assessing the quality of soils. What shall we do with it after the active phase of hostilities is over? Almost half of agricultural lands are contaminated. Uh, it requires clearing and decontamination and there must be specific technical examination prior to that. And I think it's in order for the government to have a data on which to base action, I think it's extremely important to be coherent and federative and to have a, an approach that can create information that will be in reality uh, harmonized. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro-Atlantic course. And I'm your host, Miroslava Yarenki. The non-governmental organization Society of Researchers of Ukraine and the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations will carry out a detailed study of the degree of contamination of agricultural land, mainly arable land, and will conduct an assessment of the damage caused to the soil cover and an assessment assessment of possible risks of contamination of arable land within Mykolaiv, Kherson, and Kharkiv regions, which suffered from the armed aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine. The analytical component of the study will reflect a number of important indicators. The number of sinkholes and craters from explosions with the corresponding parameters, volume of displaced soil, area of contaminated soil, and amount of damage from soil pollution. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the methodology and results of distance assessment, and we will also talk about recommendations to Ukrainian farmers based on this information. If you want to learn more about this subject, please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our videos in the future. The military actions of the Russian Federation not only lead to the destruction of Ukrainian cities and villages, but also contribute to the destruction of the ecosystem in general and its components in particular. Therefore, there is an urgent need to assess the damage caused to the environment and convert it into a monetary equivalent in order to further take this damage into account for the aggressor to pay reparations. Such an assessment is also necessary to build a plan for landscape restoration and land reclamation, as well as to take preventive measures to preserve the life and health of the population. Deputy Minister of Economy of Ukraine Igor Beskaravayny will elaborate more on the economic consequences of Russian hostilities on the territory of Ukraine. When it comes to a specific presentation that we have today and the assessment of uh, soil damage uh, level for us, for Ukraine, for the state, for the government, for each Ukrainian, it's really important just to understand what the damage is, what the loss is that we have due to Russian hostilities against us. Uh, not in the format Russians, those are bastards who gave us a lot of bad things and did bad things. We need specific figures, you know, just later to a demand for compensation, reparation, whatever you call it. So. That's why we have to take this first step to start this productive discussion and be specific in our actions. Data. We need data. We need to calculate it with the help of specific studies and surveys and research with evidence, which are calculated and interpreted in specific figures and even numbers and amounts and uh, the connection that we have. So uh, assessment of... Uh, Losses in agricultural sector due to soil wastage, it's important not just in the context that I mentioned. It's almost it's also uh important because we speak of assessing the quality of soils. What shall we do with it after the active phase of hostilities is over? So we had certain understanding, certain level of knowledge and what soils do we have in the country, in which regions, the structure. But we had to update this information via these studies as well. It's really, really, really crucial for us to know what strategy should we build and develop for agricultural sector to develop, for the state to evolve, let's say. If we take specific cases. Okay, if it's about demining. Okay, if it's about the mining of the territories, and Ministry of Economy is responsible for that as well. So we have just to understand how shall we prioritize. 
Assessing the damage and loss, it will be one of the important elements of this prioritization. Therefore, with this puzzle, let's say, uh, we'll be able to design proper methodology, objective. It will tell us in which moment which territory should be cleared for this to be super effective, super productive at the utmost extent and just to help our country to recover. In addition to losses caused by the destruction of physical assets, Ukrainian producers of agricultural products suffer losses caused in particular by a sharp drop in income and an increase in the cost of production. These losses include the effects of reduced production in crop and livestock, lower domestic prices caused by disruption in exports, and increased production costs. Oleg Sinyahubov, head of the Kharkiv Military Administration, will discuss the situation with agricultural lands in the Kharkiv region. First, I want to remind you that we uh, we are the most uh, mined, uh, the most contaminated region. Almost half of agricultural lands are contaminated. Uh, it requires clearing and decontamination, and there must be specific technical examination prior to that. So half of arable lands in Kharkiv region. So before the full-scale invasion, we were in the top three of Ukrainian regions uh, with the volume of the products that we managed to actually generate. And also when we speak about the grain that comes to ports, it's also us. So we have to examine the lands. We have to understand what is the capacity. If we can get this um, damage compensation mechanism, it's a strategic issue for the region to recover the soils and for the economy as well, yes. Half of the workplaces, especially if we talk not about Kharkiv city, but about the region, about rural areas, I can see three positive areas, which uh, we may actually develop within this project, and I do hope we'll manage to do it. First, we have this uh, trend, and already they globally discuss it, the grain which is produced here in Ukraine it's environmentally, let's say, it, it's it's not eco-friendly, it's contaminated already. The grain that produced now during the war, we speak about various types of, uh, like the corn, the wheat, and other cultures, where we usually are in the top five of exporters for that type of product. And we have to start working on this. We have to start doing something. We talked with FAO already. We have to make these maps. We have to understand what is the level of contamination in which specific district. Just, uh, yes, we have the contaminated territories, but not all of these. And we cannot just say that everything is contaminated and saying that all the grain is contaminated. We have to be very careful with it just to avoid this, as we call it, snowball effect, disseminating this in the media, you know, just giving us uh, an improper image in Europe and in the world, because we don't want to have that negative image when it comes to our products. Of course, it will be a very important strategic issue. Fortunately, still, it hasn't reached that um, uh, global level. I mean, this specific issue, but if we do nothing, it may happen. It's really good that this initiative uh, is coordinated at the level of FAO, meaning the UN organizations and agencies are there on board. We will work, we will try to compose those maps, we will examine the territory, we will present the information properly, including our international partners, to have the adequate level of understanding of what's happening now in the country and uh, that our products that we are so proud of, you know, uh, which comprises the huge percent of GDP, that it's eco-friendly, that it's safe for using it can be, it has to be exported. And last but not least, program coordinator at the Food and Agricultural Organization, Tiffane Luka, will share the recommendations from FAO for Ukrainian farmers and how to find best channels to disseminate them. There is one protocol that has been created uh, 
by FAO uh, ROM that is used nowadays for this sampling uh, by the Ukrainian Research Society, by FAO on field, uh, as well as in the future by the Fondation Suisse de Déménage. Um, I think it's important to agree uh, with all the initiatives that are ongoing in the country on the parameters that should be measured in order to understand not only what is the concentration as of today, but also to understand the entirety of the biological and physical parameters that have an important role to play in the destiny, in the faith of these contaminants. Should it be a leaching into groundwaters potentially, or should it be an uptake in the biomass that will be produced? And I think it's in order for the government to have a data on which to base action, I think it's extremely important to be coherent and federative and to have a, an approach that can create information that will be in reality uh, harmonized. Um, so this might be some part of the work that we have to, to do now. Uh, because we hear a lot of initiatives that focus on explosive traces, uh, some initiatives that focus only on heavy metals, uh, some other that are not measuring at all some key elements such as the pH, for instance, uh, electrical conductivity, very simple parameters that are really key. It's just like reading a blood analysis with having, having only an information about your uh, iron co concentration, for instance. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't give uh, any information about your health in general. Um, so I think that would be a next step in order to create a national uh, soil health assessment. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also important to understand that the outcome of this assessment is to create actionable recommendation and a technical assistance for the farmers and the producers. Uh, why? Because um, we have the French Institute of uh, Agronomy Online, I think, and they certainly also uh, consider this from their perspective. You know, there is a lot of geogenic cadmium concentration in France, meaning natural cadmium concentration. Um, and France, for instance, created a tool to be able to predict uh, the non-conformity of grain, considering the different aspects and uh, parameters of your soil analysis. I think what could be interesting in Ukraine is to create um, a model that would be able to announce to the farmers which risks he is at, not only in terms of non-conformity from the phytosanitary perspective, but also in terms of production, because the contaminants are not only a potential concern for the human health, <coughs> they are also a concern for production due to potential phytotoxicity. And the farmer needs to understand if there is a risk of decrease of 10%, 15% of the harvest. This is extremely important. The recommendations are not re um, rocket science. Usually it, it's quite straight to the point. If we speak about cadmium con contamination or slightly uh, elevated concentrations, then the basic recommendation comes from the selection uh, of the variety, uh, the selection of the... Um, um, the selection of the specific, so the crop and then the variety within the crop, so understanding which variety concentrates more this contaminant and which variety would be more resistant to this contaminant. Also the potential basic soil management, uh, management of acidity, trying to preserve the pH as you know high as possible to avoid mobility of this contaminant and avoiding uh, practices that would uh, promote erosion. So they are quite straight to the point. It's nothing that is not applicable by the farmer, but people need to have the information and we need to be able to create uh, this information and to find channels to disseminate the information. You've been watching a special project by Ukraine Media Center and Euro-Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war, Ukraine in Flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!